Hello, good morning, welcome or welcome back. So today is May 1st and I decided to do the April wrap up because I read quite a few books. I would like to discuss them with you. Not in too much detail because I'm very tired. Yesterday we went to the Leipzig uh, book fair and it was great but it was a long day i was so cold by the end of the day so i just want some cozy vibes today and some relaxation before i get back to editing the book fair for you <laughs> today i have some physical books some audiobooks some short stories i read finally some graphic novels i will have timestamps in the description below if you want to go forward to skip ahead to a point that interests you please feel free i have grouped them all together so that it's easier for me to talk about all of them i have some coffee some warm coffee to get warm and forget about the cold yesterday so yeah the first physical books i'm going to talk about are clockwork prince and clockwork princess by cassandra clare these are the two final books of the infernal devices series i had read clockwork angel back in march finally i can return them to the library if you don't remember or you don't know what this series is about it's about the first chronological adventure of shadow hunters the female lead is tessa who has some very special abilities and she doesn't know her parenthood her heritage where she comes from what what this is her background, why she has the abilities that she has and she meets Will and Jen, the Shadow Hunters and together they go on adventure. Basically that's the story we start with in the first book and from there it just escalates into these two books. Clockwork Prince was basically a reread for me, I enjoyed it very much the second time I read it. I was also listening to the audiobook as goes for Clockwork Princess and i actually liked it very much the first time i read it i thought that i didn't like it <laughs> basically i felt like it was pointless i was a little bit bored during my first read but in this reread i was actually documenting it for the reading blog that i did of all three books in the infernal devices series and i enjoyed it so much more i was taking the time to discuss and think about the the events of this book so I could remember them more. I can now remember much clear in much more clearly <laughs> what happened in this book. I have to say that I enjoyed it more than Clockwork Princess. Admittedly, Clockwork Princess was my first read of this book. <laughs> I read it for the first time now, so it wasn't a reread for me. So I had this anxiety of where we're going, how the story is going to progress, how the story is going to end actually, because it is the last book in the trilogy. So the story had to conclude somehow. I didn't really like the conclusion. I, <laughs> the outlook, I won't get too much into it in this wrap up because I have a whole reading vlog where I go into it in more detail so if you want to learn more about how this book not exactly disappointed me but it didn't meet my expectations basically you can watch this vlog let me know your thoughts there as well the next physical book I read this month was Ninth House by Libar Dugo this was also a reread I don't know why this was a theme this month. I had originally read it, I think the year it came out, so three years ago, I don't even remember. And I read it again to remember what's happening in this, so that I can then proceed to read the sequel, Hellbent, which I'm currently in the middle of. I'm close to finishing it actually, but I didn't have time to finish it yet, so it's not in this wrap up. It is a dark academia book with fantasy elements. It takes place in modern day Yale. The female lead it has been through some very dark stuff. And so this book has a lot of trigger warnings, a lot of them. Be mindful of that before going into the story. Basically, she is hired somehow to the ninth house, which is the house that's supposed to watch over the rest of the ancient eight houses of Yale that deal with magic and perform dangerous rituals and ninth house is responsible 
for them so that they don't go overboard, let's say. I really enjoyed this read. I'm not going to get into too many details because I'm also <laughs> preparing a reading vlog right now about me reading this series, 9000 Hellbent. I'm going to leave in a little bit of suspense <laughs> until I have the reading vlog ready. So yeah, I really enjoyed it though. I enjoyed it even more now that I reread it. I don't know why this was a thing this month, but I'm very happy that it happened because I'm always afraid that upon my reread I won't like a book anymore, but it wasn't the case with Ninth House as well. So I'm very excited about this. More on it on my reading vlog, keep an eye out for it. And now back to being able to sip my coffee while talking to you. The first audiobook that I want to talk about is Legends and Lattes. I finally got to this very hyped book. I listened to it in audiobook because Script had it in audiobook. And I was also very excited because it was narrated by the author himself. And that's always what I enjoy because the author can um, depict the situations and the voices and the characters the way he or she imagined it or they. So I always enjoy that. However, the thing that I didn't like was that a few of the characters were depicted with a very strong voice that was taking out of the story because if the story is narrated in a certain way and suddenly you have to put the volume down because it's too much for you or whatever, it takes you a little bit out of the story. What this story is about, it's about an orc that has decided to leave uh, the world of battling and being and going on quests behind and open a cafe in a place where nobody knows about coffee and lattes and all the great things that come with coffee. Basically the premise is very good. I like the thing the first half of the book. It was actually the perfect audiobook to listen to while doing things around the house or chores or things where you didn't have to be 100% concentrated on what you were listening to because nothing too exciting was happening you didn't have to actually keep up with the story the first half of the book was exactly that our main character going through having to hire people and having to buy the machines and the furniture that's needed the second half started having a story <laughs> all of a sudden which wasn't bad but i started having to actually focus on the audiobook i have always heard about how cozy it is and the first half of the story was really cozy and no stakes at all i could just put it on and do something that would normally tire me or stress me out and i would just relax with that on the background not having to concentrate too much and yeah i had to suddenly start concentrating on all the names and everything that was happening because it started having consequences and yeah it is a cause of fantasy but around the middle to second half it lost this essence and yeah I, I didn't know it basically from all the reviews i had heard so it wasn't bad but i started re listening to it for a reason and then i couldn't do it i don't know if it makes sense <laughs> it didn't meet my expectations on how i had expected it and then when i started it it met my expectations for a while and then it turned into something different, basically, a different book that I wasn't in the mood of reading. That's it. <laughs> I didn't enjoy that last half of the book, basically. The next two audiobooks I listened to were actually middle grade books. The first was Nick Black and the Remarkables, which is actually a very recent release. I think it was released in the start of April, early April, something like that, by Angie Thomas. Actually, this was an ALK audiobook listening copy i think anyway this was a very good story it was a typical middle grade going on an adventure being the chosen one kind of story but it had this element of being let down by a person that you trusted and having to abandon a story because it it is not good anymore you realize how fake it is or something like that which relates to harry potter and the author that wrote this 
story. I like the, the adventure. I like the, all the characters that we were introduced to. I like the way it was narrated. The main character's voice was very cute. And she was also very funny and that was depicted very nicely. It was a cute little story basically. Oh, but I didn't say what it is about. <laughs> so it's about this girl that has always been on, not exactly on the run, but she has always lived with her father and suddenly they had to move in many on many occasions in the past. She never knew why until one day she discovers why and she goes in this huge adventure because her father is being captured and she has to clear his name basically and also uh, find out about her past, about her real family and what is going on and so many things happen basically it takes you on an infinite adventure from there and actually the way the book ends it has a lot of potential i'm planning on continuing with this series when the next book is released also it's by a very very well-known author angie thomas a very enjoyable story a very nice middle grade debut for this author that's all i have to say about this book for the next book i have to say even less. <laughs> the Guardian Test, it was a very short story about a girl that was chosen to become a guardian, go to this elitistic a little bit, guardian boarding school slash academy that teaches the kids how to hone some of their abilities. They will transform into an animal form and have specific powers and they learn how to do that and how to uh, accumulate a lot of abilities in order to become guardians. I don't remember what they're guarding, I think it's just guardians. Yeah, it was a very short story. I think it is about 150 pages in physical format, but I listened to the audiobook. It was very short, it was cool. I don't remember most of the things happening in this book. It was good. It was just that good. A good way to spend the time and my commute time and listen to something while I'm on the train. Yeah, it, it was good. That's just that. So the next category of books that I actually listened to, I listened to both of those, although I did have the book format, I think for one of them, I don't remember. I found them on script and they were like two hours or one hour and some minutes. So it was very fun, it was very easy and it was short stories. The first is Empress of Salt and Fortune. This was very good, very cozy, I would say. Basically, we follow the story and the flashbacks of a maiden that used to serve a queen of this East Asian inspired setting. It was actually very cozy. It was like being narrated a classic fairy tale, listening to all the stories about the Empress and the Emperor. It was very good. I enjoyed it very much, basically. But, you know, it was very short. I didn't get attached to the characters or anything. I just liked it because it reminded me of reading to folklore and fairy tale stories. And I always enjoy this element in books. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. It is also the first in a series. I'm not too sure I'm going to continue with the rest of the series because I have to be in the right mood. They are available on script, so maybe at some point. The next uh, short story audiobook I listened to is All Systems Red, which is the first short story in a series, The Murderbot Diaries. And this was actually very good. We are in the perspective of a robot, a murder bot. It calls itself murder bot. Murder bot. Oh, I can't say it. too many hours. Anyway, <laughs> basically, this first story is the introduction. The murder bot is basically a robot, a humanoid robot that's supposed to be guarding a groups of people that go into outer space for explorations or for for adventures let's say i think they also murder on occasion but all this murder board wants to do is to basically watch streaming services and series tv shows movies and all this stuff which is very relatable and very funny if you think about it it's a robot that wants to love that loves to watch 
just play no TV shows and movies. This is basically the story. We follow the murder boat and their team for a while while they're going into a planet that is in a bad condition, lots of murder people, lots of descriptions of corpses, <laughs> so trigger warning for that. I was a little bit anxious in some points, but I really enjoyed it. I think I'm going to continue with the rest of the series. However, it is short stories as well, so I'm not getting too attached to the characters as well. But this murder bot, but this murder, but this bot <laughs> stands out for some reason. So yeah. And lastly, I'm going to talk about all the graphic novels and manga I read during this month because it was a lot. For a while there, I was sucked into the void of webtoon and I read Lower Olympus there. Not the whole thing because it's like 200 episodes. I watched the episodes that are equal to the five first volumes and I'm definitely going to continue because I want to see where we go. We are on a point of cliffhanger and I really want to see where we go next. I have also saved a lot of webtoons there and I want to make my way to them, basically. Lower Olympus is a reimagined Hades and Persephone, or Addis and Persephone in Greek. It is a Greek mythology based story, but Mount Olympus is a very modern play. We have like our modern day problems and phones, cell phones and computers and everything. But when we go back to the mortal world, it is still the ancient time, so that's a very interesting point in the novel. It is also very well um, drawn. Uh, all the gods and goddesses have different colors of their skin, of their hair. It is very interesting to read visually as well, not only because of the story. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. I also read the first two volumes of the Tea Dragon Society. This is a very cute story, very loosely. It is about tea dragons, which is literally dragons that have little flowers in them and you can cut some flowers, some leaves of these flowers and make tea. The first volume is taking place on the current timeline, while the second takes us on a flashback, which is very interesting. I thoroughly enjoyed the illustrations in this, they were very cute, very cozy and beautiful colors as well. Such a wholesome story, basically. Then I moved to Brave Chef Brianna, which is a volume of, I think, four or five chapters. This is about a young girl that is very interested. She loves, basically, cooking. She has a ton of older brothers, and uh, their father is a famous chef who is very sick, and he has decided to put a challenge in all of his kids, and whoever wins the challenge of opening a very successful restaurant is going to inherit his name, basically, and his legacy. Brianna goes into Master City to open her restaurant because the rest of the cities are uh, claimed by her brothers. Follow her there as she opens her restaurant, similar to Legends and Ladders, but not so cozy and she meets a lot of monsters there it's a very nice story she has some trials she has to overcome and we also meet one of her brothers who is yeah his attitude needs to be worked on but anyway it's a very nice story and i also read the first novel in the oh my god graphic novel series i think there is one more graphic novel out i don't know if they will continue but this was a very good introduction the illustrations were very simple i read it on script but the whole book feel was very very simple but very straightforward it also had the greek um, mythology element and it is about a young girl that has to live with your, with your father for a while but your father is one of the Greek gods which she didn't know and she goes to high school there and she realizes who everybody is she makes friends with a lot of the gods so it's a very interesting story and they also have to solve an investigation and mystery 
very good very cozy a very good time basically lastly this month i also started a manga series on script again it has only three volumes out it had stunning illustrations and a very interesting uh story that basically sucked me away i have to read the title because it it is too big for me to say out loud and remember i was reincarnated as the villainess in an atom game but the boys love me anyway <laughs> This is a title. I recently found out about the villainous manga genre uh, that is basically when you follow the story from the point of the villainess. Usually there is a girl that is reincarnated as the villainess and she has to basically avoid her fate, which is usually being killed by the heroine. <laughs> so it is a very interesting concept and in this, the main heroine is reincarnated in a game, like a sim dating game where she has to choose who she's going to end up with. She's a villainess though. Usually the heroine has to choose and everybody hates the villainess, but she's a villainess and everybody loves her because she's trying to survive the game, but also to not be the villainess. I don't know if it makes sense, but it's very cute, it's very fun. And we also get some POVs by the actual boys that are in the game so it's very interesting i'm currently in the middle of reading the second volume and i'm going to read the third for sure so that's it for this video i wanted it to be a little bit shorter i hope i managed it i have no idea how much time i'm talking hopefully you have a nice cozy afternoon evening morning whatever time it is where you are and see you in another video thank you so much for watching Bye bye mm -hmm.